Good morning, greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on the Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, Recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis, and while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we welcome your phone calls on the bright side at 844-236-6010. That's 844-236-6010. We will be talking to Dr. Terry Walls at the bottom of the hour, so we'll get your calls in our second segment at 844-236-6010. If you have a comment or success story, if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the Longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the Bright Side, please go to my website's brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can purchase products right off the website. You can also sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team off the websites as well, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. For a one-time $25 fee, you can start a longevity business, earn thank you checks associated with your longevity products, and start your own business working out of the home, quit your day job maybe, earn tax benefits associated with having your own business, make your own hours, make as much money or as little money as you like. For a one-time $25 fee, you can sign up right off our websites, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com, or you can call the phone team at 866 735 2470-866-735-2470. You can also order products by calling 866-735-2470. And also want to remind you about our Truth Skin Health products, truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. If you're dealing with a burn or post-surgery, you want to know about our Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream. It's a great moisturizer as well as skin softener. Truth Serum, Truth Balm, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, and our Truth Retinol 5% Gel, never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, emulsifiers, water, silicon, propylene, glycol, vegetable oils, any oils, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our Truth Skin Health products. You can check them out at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. All right, so we've got Dr. Terry Walls, author of The Walls Protocol, coming up at the bottom of the hour. Dr. Walls beat multiple sclerosis. She was in a wheelchair herself, and she cured herself of multiple sclerosis using the paleo diet, eating lots of veggies, not using any drugs, and she's got a very interesting story to tell about, uh, specifically about paleo to treat all chronic auto, uh, autoimmune conditions, but she talks a lot about micronutrient supplementation and auto, uh, autoimmune diseases in general. She'll be on at the bottom of the hour, and we'll take your phone calls in our second segment at 844-236-6010. Okay, so continuing on with the polyphenols, these uber-powerful plant nutrients that have so many different medicinal properties. Later on, uh, when we talk to Terry Walls, she's going to be telling us about uh, vitamins and minerals and uh, micronutrients and other nutrients that you could use for the nervous system. But as it turns out, some of the most powerful anti-inflammatory substances for the nervous system are the polyphenols. Reading from an article, this is published in the journal Complementary Therapeutic Medicine, August 2011, quote, healthy dietary molecules, including polyphenols, may slow down the progression and ameliorate the wellness of MS patients, unquote. 
Polyphenols are super powerful medicinal therapeutic healing molecules. We've been saying this for the last couple of weeks now. They're found in all plants, all botanicals. And in fact, they're largely responsible in many ways. There's, there's lots of things, of course, in plants and botanicals. But certainly a case can be made that none is more important than the polyphenols when it comes to therapy and when it comes to healing. We talked the uh, last couple of days about one of the more well-known of the polyphenols, resveratrol. A couple more things I want to say before we move on from resveratrol, this multifunctional antioxidant that for most folks is associated with red wine. I first heard about resveratrol when I started my compounding pharmacy in the 1990s. You don't hear about quite as much these days, but their literature on the value of this stuff is piling up, especially when it comes to heart disease. It slows down blood clotting, it thins the blood. That benefits the heart. It protects the lining of blood vessels, as we said yesterday. The lining of the blood vessels is the locus of deterioration and degeneration that's associated with cholesterol and plaques and deposits. Resveratrol can help lower blood pressure. It's an antioxidant that protects cholesterol from oxidation, from the formation of toxic cholesterol. Cholesterol itself is not toxic, but oxycholesterol is toxic. That is oxidized, rusted, broken down, rancid cholesterol. And resveratrol has a protective effect on this. Resveratrol is anti-diabetic. If you've got diabetes or you're pre-diabetic or you don't want to have diabetes or you're eating a lot of sugar, resveratrol helps your insulin work better. And that itself can help improve cardiovascular health. According to an article published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, this is June 2014, quote, resveratrol significantly improves glucose control and insulin sensitivity in persons with diabetes, unquote. In addition to improving cardiovascular health and helping folks dealing with heart disease, there are numerous studies that talk about resveratrol for cancer protection. It increases cancer cell suicide in a process called apoptosis. Cells will actually kill themselves. Cells will actually commit suicide when they are dysfunctional, when they're broken down, when their genetics is messed up, when they're precancerous. Cells have a mechanism for destroying themselves. It's called cell suicide or apoptosis, A-P-O-P-T-O-S-I-S. -P -P apoptosis is a protective mechanism so that cells don't reproduce and uh, uh, mutated cells don't reproduce. When we have cancer, that mechanism does not occur and resveratrol helps support this apoptotic or this cell suicide process. Resveratrol can help reduce muscle wasting that's associated with cancer. Resveratrol supports estrogen metabolism and that can have an anti-cancer effect as well as benefiting menopausal women, women who have hot flashes or anxiety or uh, any uh, infertility or any of, this, uh, uh, any of the uh, unpleasantries associated with estrogen and also associated with menopause. It's anti-inflammatory, it's neuroprotective, it helps protect against dementia. I mean, there's so many benefits to this thing. It uh, helps reduce plaque formation in the brain that's been linked to Alzheimer's disease and the blood sugar, uh, blood sugar lower effect that is beneficial for the heart will also benefit the brain. It's got memory performance, uh, uh, memory performance benefits. It improves dementia, cognitive difficulties, memory problems, dementia, uh, uh, psychotic disorders, autism. Uh, so many benefits to, uh, to uh, resveratrol. It improves longevity. If you're interested in using the stuff, you can supplement with resveratrol. Our Cell Shield RTQ has some uh, longevity. S Cell Shield RTQ has some resveratrol in it. Uh, it's, uh, RVB 300 has some resveratrol in it. If you want to get it from foods, you can get it from grapes, peanuts, soy, peanut butter, as we said yesterday, cocoa. Most supplemental resveratrol comes from a very interesting plant called the Japanese knotweed. The Japanese knotweed is considered to be a botanical pest. It's really, really hardy. That's, uh, that's its claim to fame. Uh, uh, the Japanese knotweed is just incredibly hardy. It's a pest. Gardeners know it as a pest. And it may very well be that the hardiness and the resilience of the Japanese knotweed plant may be because it's such a great source of resveratrol. The Japanese knotweed is known for being able to grow through concrete and tarmac. And some gardeners consider it to be the most invasive uh, uh, weed species on the planet. And it could be because of its resveratrol. In Japan, where the Japanese knotweed, obviously, comes from, or where it grows abundantly, there is a popular beverage called Itadori tea. Itadori tea is loaded with resveratrol, and you can actually make your own Itadori tea. We'll talk about that when we come back from our break. And take your phone calls. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back on the bright side right after this. We are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Uh, I've got a 
full board actually, and we will uh, get your phone calls here in a sec. I'll, uh, I, gotta, I, I wanna get to as many calls as possible, so we'll finish up talking about Itadori tea tomorrow as we continue talking polyphenols, and then we'll get into some cool phenolic acids, which uh, some of you have heard of. And then we're gonna talk about my all-time favorite plant nutrients, the flavonoids. We'll do that in the coming days. On the bright side, Terry Walls is coming up at the bottom of the hour. We're going to talk about the Walls Protocol. Dr. Walls beat MS herself without medication. She's one of the good guy doctors using nutrition and micronutrients. We'll talk to her at the bottom of the hour. And I think it's time to hit the phones. Got a bunch of folks who want to talk to us. Let's go to Oklahoma and welcome Robin to the bright side. Good morning, Robin. How you doing? I'm all right. I have a question. Um, two questions, actually. Why would a person wake up with a low blood sugar under 70? And then what is your opinion on lithium orotate for sleep disorder? For sleep disorder, lithium's awesome stuff. Absolutely awesome. A, a very underappreciated nutrient. It's really inexpensive. You can get it anywhere. Um, you, it's a it's a drug. You know, if folks with bipolar disorder, manic depressive disorder, uh, they will get prescribed lithium. You go to the drugstore. You wait in line. You fill out insurance forms and do all the things you need to do to get your uh, your prescription drugs if you want lithium. But you can get it at a health food store. It's not a drug, really. It's a mineral, and it's an essential mineral. It's in the same family as soda. It's amazingly, amazingly helpful for relaxation, for sleep. You don't have to have a mental disorder to benefit from lithium. Uh, it's one of those nutrients that should be in the in the water and in the soil, but it's not. I'm a big believer in supplementing with lithium orotate. Uh, I didn't catch your first question about diabetes. Can you repeat that for me? No. Uh, well, uh to the lithium, is quality an issue? I mean, is there a... You know, that's always going to be... Nutritional supplements are always going to have that. You just never know. I like a company called NOW. Now. Uh, Solgar is good. Natural Source is good. Um, you never absolutely know. That's one of the beautiful things about working with Longevity. Longevity has been around for a long time, and they've got to, they've got to make sure that their products are good are good because so many people are selling their products. So uh, I think uh, that's, a, that's always going to be a question. Not so much with the minerals because the minerals are not really complicated to manufacture. They're very simple molecules. So you're not going to have that prob much of a problem with lithium in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, quality. But I would still stick with NOW now or maybe Solgar. Okay. And I did, well, did you, did, My first question was, what would be the reason that someone uh, would wake up with a very low blood sugar like you mean every more? Every, that's a sign of insulin resistance. That's a, or that's a sign that you're producing a lot of insulin, that your body is making insulin. There's two factors when it comes to blood sugar. There's the sugar, and then there's the insulin, which is the response to the sugar. Before you go into full-blown diabetes, that's when your insulin doesn't work. You actually have the opposite problem. That's when your insulin is secreted in really high amounts, and insulin is overactive, and that's usually will, is typically the cause of low blood sugar. Now, during the night, your body is burning through sugar. You're doing bio, biological processes as you sleep. It may not seem like that because you're sleeping, but the biology of your body, the cells are still working and they're utilizing sugar. So it's not unusual. Uh, it's a little bit unusual, I should say, but it's not totally unusual or out, unheard of to wake up in the morning with low blood sugar. Try to, if that happens to you, do a little bit of protein before you go to bed, a little whey protein or a little bone broth protein, and then your body will be able to utilize that protein for energy. Protein can get turned into sugar. I wouldn't do sugar before I went to bed because that might keep you from falling asleep, but a little bit of protein before you go to bed can help. Sometimes you'll, your blood sugar will drop in the middle of the night, and in response, you'll get this surge of stress hormone. That's one of the ways the body responds to hypoglycemia or low blood sugar is you get a surge of cortisol and you wake up in the middle of the night from that surge of cortisol and you won't be able to go back to sleep for an hour or two until the cortisol kind of levels out. So eating a little bit of protein is the stra best strategy before you go to bed is the best way to handle that. I'm going to let you go here, Robin. Thanks so much for your call. Hope we helped you out. All right, let's move to uh, John in New Jersey. What's going on, John? Welcome to the bright side. Hey, Ben, it's a pleasure to be on the air with you, and uh, I am drinking my tangy tangerine right Good now. Deal. Oh, you're, are you morning. Mario's friend? You're Mario's I friend, I am Mario's John. friend. He's my uh, partner in our uh, new mission, our new movement, Make100Healthy.com, which I, I uh, was very uh, happy that you spoke about the last time Mario was on the air with you. Now, you have a webinar you're doing. Real quick, tell us about the webinar, how we can get on it, how people can listen to it. 
Okay, thanks. Yeah. Well, we are doing a webinar for professionals, holistic practitioners, whether yoga, massage, Reiki, uh, essential oils, anybody that is in the business of helping people live a balanced life. We're joining together to be able to uh, work with one common message, you know, whether it's mentally, physically, spiritually, financially, socially, or environmentally, we are joining together to try to help people. And uh, we invite uh, professionals to go to the webinar. It's make100healthy.com forward slash webinar. Make the number 100. About, the number 100, right? Yes, 100? Well, yes, yes, exactly. Make100healthy.com. Dot com forward, forward slash, slash webinar. webinar. Okay, good and deal. And we speak about all the great things that people like you are doing. And we look at helping people as a whole to live a balanced life. And, of course, you need the nutrition that you speak about with longevity, but, you know, mentally, spiritually, financially, all, all these important. things go together. And uh, uh, also for your um, for the regular folks out there, uh, Make100Healthy.com, we've just put out an e-book, How to Live a Life of Vitality and Longevity, and it's a free e-book. So we are just trying to build a movement to give people enlightenment, and listening to folks like yourself uh, is Really, you're on the forefront of what I think in 10 years from now will be standard fare I to agree. be able to let people look at their entire, you know, their wellness as a whole and to live a long life. People are living longer, uh, and we want to make sure that they enjoy the ride and live they better. live with vitality. They want to live, live better in addition to living longer. That's great. Hey, let me ask you something real quick, and then I'm going to let you go. Uh, can sure. anybody listen in to this uh, webinar, or does it just have to be for practitioners? No, no, anybody can listen in, but it is geared towards the professional. But anybody that is interested in their health and their wellness, uh, we talk about the six pillars of life, and uh, it's all great information. But specifically, we're building our network so we can amplify our message through uh, you know, a, a common theme of helping people live with vitality for longevity. That's awesome. Thank you so much for your kind, for your good work and uh, also for the kind words. Appreciate it. Say hi to Mario for me. I'm going to let you go. I want to get I one more call in. Thank you so much, my friend. Thank Take you. Take care, John. Have a great day. All right, Rick in Illinois. Got to go quickly here. Got about a minute. What's going on, Rick? Hi, Ben. Thanks for taking my call. Um, I had a trip to my ER back on December 3rd for dizziness and loss of balance. I was given a CT scan. The results were mild mucosal thickening of both maxillary sinuses and ethmoid sinuses. Fluid level present in the right maxillary sinus compatible with acute sinusitis. I was dying. Yeah. I think it was like a neuritis. Um, I was prescribed an antibiotic. I went back to my ENT um, in the first week of February for a follow-up. He did a culture, a sinus culture, diagnosed me with another sinus. Sinus infection. Put on another antibiotic. Not a good idea, um, John. Listen, I'm a Rick. I'm sorry. I got, I'm going to. I'm going to uh, go real quickly here. Mucus is the operative word. All that other stuff is medical gibberish. All you need to know is mucus. If you have mucus, your body's responding to something. If there's bacteria in there, the bacteria don't necessarily have to be primary. They can be secondary. They could be. Uh, they could be building up because of the because of the inflammation that is that the mucus is responding to. So you got to figure out what's going on that's causing that inflammation. Almost always, it's going to be food and Can the I digestive talk about this system. With you after your next guest, what's you know what? Uh, I'm going to be off the air after that. So why don't you send an email to Ben at ksco.com? Put your phone number in there, and I'll call you back. Okay? Got to right, go, man. We got about two seconds. Terry Wall is coming up at the bottom of the hour. We are back on the bright side. I am Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening, friends. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive pages at brightsideben.com and pharmacistben.com. We have six years of good health information on the archives pages at brightsideben.com and, pharmac- and uh, benfuchsarchives.com. You can also purchase longevity products off of the websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. You can check out our blog and news stories. And then also want to encourage you to take a look at our Truth Treatment products, Retinol 5% Gel, Truth Serum, Truth Bomb, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, all packed with fat-soluble vitamin C, never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, oils, emulsifiers, silicone, on water, propylene glycol, and any of our Truth Skin Health products. You shouldn't have to pay for anything your skin doesn't need or doesn't want. 
That's truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, I am excited. We're going to be talking to one of my favorite alternative MDs, I guess you could call her. Uh, she's the author of a, a neat book called The Walls Protocol, uh, W-A-H-L-S, The Walls Protocol, which I read a couple of years ago. Dr. Terry Walls, MD. Cured herself of multiple sclerosis using only paleo principles as well as some functional medicine strategies. She uh, is a big believer in micronutrients, using micronutrients through foods, and uh, she's got some really cool things to say. Uh, the best thing about Dr. Walls is she's observed herself in her own life the power of what we talk about on this program every day, the power of diet, the power of food, the power of paleo, the power of micronutrients, the power of non-medical strategies for dealing with chronic long-term degenerative disease. Please welcome to the Bright Side, Dr. Terry Walls. Good morning, Dr. Walls. Hey, good morning. I'm so glad to be here. Yes, I'm glad you're on because you are living proof of everything we talk about on this program every day, and you're an MD to boot, and I love that. So tell us a little bit about your story because it's a very, very fascinating story about how, about your, uh, about a little bit about how you experienced your multiple sclerosis and then a lot about sure. how you dealt with it. You know, uh, before being diagnosed, I was very skeptical of vitamin supplements, special diets. I thought people were wasting their money. Uh, but, you know, God works in mysterious ways. I uh, managed to get diagnosed in 2000 I, uh, with multiple sclerosis. I sought out the best people I could find here in the Midwest, which was the Cleveland Clinic, and I saw our MS specialist at the University of Iowa, took the newest drugs. Within three years, I was in a tilt recline wheelchair, uh, and I was continuing to go downhill. I would take mitoxantro in a form of chemotherapy, continue to go downhill. Then I took uh, um, Tizabri, uh, the new biologic drug, continue to go downhill. Then I was placed on uh, Celsept. Now, during this whole time, once I hit the wheelchair, uh, I saw that, uh, you know, the best drugs weren't stopping my decline towards a bedridden and potentially demented life. That's when I went back to reading the basic science, studying immunology, cell physiology. I would uh, discover the ancestral health movement. I would discover uh, functional medicine. And I would combine all of this to create a diet and lifestyle program designed for my brain cells, for my mitochondria. And, you know, I was doing this at, at the time to slow my decline because I knew I had accepted what doctors had been telling me all along is that with progressive MS, functions once lost never come back. But what we discovered was, in fact, uh, functions were coming back one after another. Mm, I started walking, awesome. then I was able to bike, and, and uh, 12 months after starting my protocol, I was able to do a 20-mile bike ride with my family. <laughs> That's amazing. What do you so, th what do you, you know, this really... I'm sorry, what's I mean, going through your head? changed how I understood disease and health. What's going through your head as you're noticing that you're getting better, even though this, is, this flies in the face of everything that you've learned? What's going through your head? Are you starting to question things? Well, you know, at, at, at first, as part of the coping strategy of having an incurable disease, you get to a place where you let go of expectations, and you'll just take everything one day at a time. So I'm recovering quite remarkably. I'm walking again. I'm walking around the neighborhood again. And I'm still taking things one day at a time. But it was when I got on my bike and I biked around the block on that Mother's Day in 2008 that hope came back into my life, that I realized who knew how much recovery might be possible, that the present understanding of progressive uh, MS was flawed. Uh, and so that was really the beginning of, of uh, fundamentally changing my approach to how I took care of my patients. How I long? Was all at, at, Go ahead. You know, I, I, was, uh, I quit talking so much about drugs, and I was now talking about diet and lifestyle and environmental exposures. Now, how long did, did it take from the time you were diagnosed to the time you were walking around and, and, and functional? So, you know, I was diagnosed in 7,000. In 3,000, I uh, am needing a tilt recline wheelchair. Uh, by uh, uh, 2007, I'm so weak I cannot sit up uh, in a regular chair anymore. It's a struggle to walk 10 feet with my two uh, walking sticks. I have severe poorly controlled pain. I have brain fog, uh, and I have severe fatigue. Although, you know, the VA and the university had modified my job multiple times. So fortunately, I was still working. Uh, 
And in the fall of 2007, I you know, began this intensive vitamin regimen. In December of 2008, I've got it figured out what foods I should be uh, stressing. Uh, and, you know, then 12 months later, I'm, uh, well, in, in three months I'm walking with a cane, six months I'm walking without a cane. At nine months, I do my bike ride around the block. At 12 months, I do a 20-mile bike ride. That is awesome, Dr. Wall. So you're a bit, uh, you talk a lot about paleo in your book, and I want to talk about that. I also yeah. want to talk about micronutrients. Uh, tell me how you how do you define paleo? To d- describe that for us as you see it. So many of the paleo folks focus mostly on you have to give up all grain, all legumes, all dairy, uh, and uh, eat meat. Uh, they aren't very prescript- prescriptive about what kind of vegetables to eat. I am very prescriptive as you eat mostly vegetables. Uh, and particular kinds of structure, lots of greens, lots of cabbage, onion family, mushroom family, lots of deeply colored vegetables, and some meat. So it's mostly vegetables with some meat. Um, it's, uh, I'm different that way, which I think uh, gives a much richer supply of micronutrients and a richer supply of food for your microbiome and a better shift of how your genes will be expressed. How about dairy? Where does that fit in? Uh, so uh, the dairy protein is very similar to the protein in grain gluten uh, and uh, can cause a aggressive inflammatory response. In, uh, so I have people take all dairy out with the exception of clarified butter or ghee. Uh, they can use that, uh, and we use that routinely uh, on our vegetables. It's quite delicious, and I'm glad I can still get to use it because I am a, a dairy farmer's daughter, so okay. I'm glad yeah. to still use ghee. I love. I do it out of the spoon. I just put dip, dip the spoon into ghee. What do you think about coconut oil, by the way? Uh, coconut oil is uh, another great food, uh, and there's a lot of uh, study going on uh, about the use of ketosis hmm. to treat refractory seizures, to treat Alzheimer's, brain cancer, uh, cancer overall, uh, in a variety of what we call neurodegenerative disorders. Now, the ketogenic diet, which is what you're referring to, and paleo, they don't necessarily go hand in hand. The paleo diet, as I understand, it, has a little bit more, too much protein. Uh, and tell me what you think. Correct. We gotta take a break. I want, you, I want to know. I want to know your take on. Uh, actually, I want to know your take on the differences between the paleo and the ketogenic diet for dealing with these kinds of health challenges. And also, want to talk a little bit about micronutrients. We're talking to Dr. Terry Walls. Her website is terrywalls.com. W A H L S is how she spells her last name. Uh, and her very wonderful book, an easy to read book, and very useful book, The Walls Protocol. I'm pharmacist Ben. You're listening to the Bright Side. We'll be back right. Now. We are back on the bright side. I am Pharmacist Ben. We're talking to Dr. Terry Walls, author of The Walls Protocol, or How I Beat Progressive MS Using the Paleo Using Paleo Principles in Functional Medicine. Dr. Walls has a really cool website too, by the way, terrywalls.com, and a newsletter which I subscribe to, and you can get that off the website as well. So, uh, Dr. Walls, before we went to break, we were talking about the paleo and the distinction between paleo and keto. I always found that the paleo diet for people who aren't working out kid kind of mess up blood sugar a little bit and maybe counterproductive. What's your take on the paleo as, and paleo versus keto? So the uh, ketogenic diet is high in fat, lower in meat, low in carbs. If you have too much meat, uh, you can't get into ketosis. Uh, so uh, uh, you have, depending on which type you found, if you follow a dairy-based uh, ketogenic diet, it's 90% of the calories come from fat. If it's a medium chain triglyceride or coconut oil based uh, ketogenic diet, 60 to 70 percent of the calories will come from fat. Uh, whereas the uh, average uh, paleo diet is probably about 40 to 50 percent of the calories coming from fat. And then how much protein? Well, you know, it'll depend. Uh, many uh, paleo eaters eat mostly meat, a little bit of vegetables, uh, and some fruit. My version is mostly vegetables uh, and some meat. So in my version, it's six to 12 ounces of meat. Uh, but, uh, you know, in some uh, paleo diets, it's 24 ounces of meat. So do you, uh, there's uh, a bit of a difference there. Do you concern yourself with antibiotics and hormones in meat and also uh, organic versus not organic when it comes to dealing with autoimmune well, diseases and MS? Um, so I think the uh, antibiotics in our meat definitely is a problem. Uh, I also think the glyphosate, or the Roundup and all the food and grain that the cattle eat means, uh, and that's a potent antibiotic. 
So if they're eating conventional grain, uh, they're getting antibiotics in their food. However, um, while I think uh, organic grass-fed wild caught uh, is ideal, I also recognize that for many people that's not an economic uh, option for them. Uh, and what I learned when I was running my lifestyle clinic at, at the VA, uh, that we'd work with people, uh, they could still buy conventional food uh, if all they could afford was canned, we'd have them do that. We would still teach them how to maximize their nutrition using the money that they had available. And we still saw uh, really a remarkable healing. The big thing we had to do was teach people how to cook at home. Uh, and uh, as they learned how to cook, they would begin to figure out how to get more and more organic food uh, and sustainably raised food into their diet. And having done that, I realized that my next thing I needed to do was to write uh, the cookbook so I could take this message out to the greater public as well. Now, are you talking about a cookbook in addition to the Walls Protocol? Because you've got some really cool recipes in, in this book. Is there another book, too? So, so in the original book, that's the Walls Protocol, the hardback and the paperback, lots of recipes there. We now have the uh, cookbook. Uh, Walls Protocol Cooking for Life, uh, and uh, uh, we have recipes, I, uh, and I teach people how to cook at home, uh, how to deal with menus and shopping, nice. uh, and then we have templates for a wide variety uh, of, fo- of foods like smoothies and uh, teas and skillet meals and soups and stews, salads, and of now course these- uh, some desserts and treats for people as well. And you don't have to have an autoimmune disease to benefit from these kinds of strategies, just for general health or longevity, or, right? I mean, you get a lot Correct. of benefits. So in our lifestyle clinic, we had, of course, had people with autoimmune disease. We had neurological problems, mental health problems, diabetes, obesity, and all of those kinds of people were helped. In the thousands and thousands of followers, I hear from people, including athletes, who tell me that mm. they have had uh, improved athletic performance. You know, and then I have a lot of folks who have uh, family members who have early onset uh, Alzheimer's, or they know they have the APOE4 gene, which puts them at risk for Alzheimer's, uh, and they've had great uh, response uh, to this diet as well. Now, you mentioned dairy and staying away from dairy. What about whey protein? So whey protein still has the casein in it, and it's the uh, casein that can be inflammatory. It can also... uh, uh, stimulate uh, uh, a lot of growth factors, which will increase the risk for uh, cancerous uh, and non-cancerous tumors. So you're telling people to stay away from the whey? I would rather they stay away from the whey, yes. Okay, now uh, I want to talk about micro and macronutrients, but before you get to that, t- what's your take on calorie restriction for inflammation and autoimmunity? Well, uh, certainly if you uh, calorie restrict or you do intermittent fasting, uh, uh, you uh, increase the number and efficiency of your mitochondria, which is a good thing. We know in many, many studies uh, it's a very potent anti-aging. Uh, and it appears to help uh, reset uh, and lower the inflammation as well. So there are a lot of reasons why it's quite beneficial. Uh, and we find that as people uh, they do the level one, get comfortable, they're good at that, and then they want to try the next level, uh, we can begin to talk about this calorie restriction or intermittent fasting as a as a, another strategy to add. Okay. One of the neatest things, one of the things I found that was most compelling about your message is this distinction that you make between macro and micronutrients. And it's a, a distinction you don't hear a lot of people talk about. We talk about nutrition kind of generally, but we don't distinguish micronutrients from macronutrients. So tell us a little bit about the, the two and how they're distinguished and sure. why the micronutrients are so important. You know, so there's a lot of conversation about uh, how many grams of protein, how many grams of carb, carbohydrates, how many grams of fat you should have, and what's the right proportion for optimal health. Uh, but uh, our, our mitochondria, uh, which is what manages the energy for our cell, can burn fat or protein or carbohydrates. So we can survive with a wide variety of ratios between those three macronutrients. But what really determines how, how whether we have a an inflamed, sickly, disease-prone body, or a healthy, disease-resistant body are the micronutrients uh, that we get in the uh, plants. So having 200 different plant species in a year uh, will help shift those micronutrients uh, and shift which genes are turned on. They'll also uh, have a great influence on the bacteria living in our bowels. So it's really much more important 
that we pay attention to maximizing our micronutrient density. And we talk about micronutrients, to be clear, we're talking about vitamins, we're talking about minerals, we're talking about essential, uh, essential amino acids, and we're talking about essential fatty acids, correct? Correct. correct. Okay, now. And I'll throw yeah. in some antioxidants in there as well. Now, I was about to say, what do you think about things like polyphenols and flavonoids and these phytonutrients that you get from plants? Do you consider those well, to be you micronutrients? Know, these are the kind of nutrients uh, that are in uh, plants, and that's part of why... Uh, I'm so keen on having people increase their vegetable intake. And I also uh, like to uh, give people the stretch goal of uh, having 200 different plant species that they consume over the year's time period, which will uh, hopefully increase their interest in trying a variety of teas, herbal teas, uh, and spices uh, outside their own culinary tradition. How do you recommend that people practically get veg, uh, all the different forms of vegetables? And you know, there's there's dozens, hundreds, maybe different forms of vegetables that have valuable, that have nutritional value. How, what's a practical way to make sure that you're getting as diverse uh, and taking as diverse an well, intake of these various yeah. uh, veggies? Some, uh, certainly, when you go to the store and you see a new vegetable, that's a, a fun thing. I, my kids got into that when we had the 200 uh, plant species goal. Adding uh, more uh, a wide variety of spices to your meals will do that. Uh, trying a variety of teas will do that. When you go uh, get greens, getting a, a green uh, blend of uh, mixed greens, uh, that's uh, incredibly helpful as well. What's your take in our last minute here? What's your take on supplementation, micronutrient supplementation? Uh, food is the most critical. I want to remind everyone that uh, when I was uh, relying on vitamins and supplements, I slowed my decline. I did not recover. It was when I designed my diet to maximize the nutrient densities when I had this miraculous recovery. Are there food will always be much more powerful. I agreed. Are there nutrients, micronutrients, that stand out in importance for dealing with autoimmunity or immune diseases? Uh, vitamin D. I, I like to have people get their vitamin D measured. Uh, and if necessary, take supplements or get more sunlight exposure to get their vitamin D level into the top half of the reference range. I also like to monitor the, monitor the homocysteine level. Uh, and if the homocysteine is uh, high, then we have some targeted supplements uh, around the methylation pathway and the B vitamins. And how about electrolytes, things like potassium and magnesium, calcium and such? Bone broth and seaweed will be your, uh, very mm, helpful. Very uh, and I'm nice. also very fond of uh, uh, using sea salt uh, generously nice. uh, because that is a great source of uh, minerals. Nice. Oh, that's awesome information, Dr. Walls. We're out of time. Thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate it very much. It's Dr. Terry Walls. Her book is The Walls Protocol, or website terrywalls.com. One of the good doctors. Lots of great information in this book, lots of great recipes. And also, um, she's got a newsletter at terrywalls.com. All right, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for listening to The Bright Side, friends. Please check out our website, uh, our skin health website at truthtreatments.com and our longevity websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. Have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.